Hello and welcome to Outside Xbox. You're watching Show of the Week. I'm Andy. And I'm Mike. Hello. So, what have you been up to this, Mike? What have you been playing? Didn't a new Battlefield come out? Pretty sure I heard something about that. Oh, is that the one with the Battle Royale mode called Blackout? No, no, that's Call of Duty. Oh, is it the one with the purple dragon with the brown and the... Mm, uh, Spyro. I'm pretty sure that's Battlefield V. Anyway, I've been playing Fallout 76. Oh, yeah? Well, I've been enjoying watching the progress bar for the 47 gig patch. Ooh, let me have a go. No! No, no, no I'm enjoying it! Don't get here. I want to play. Nope. Yep. Still, once that's downloaded, you'll be able to play Fallout 76 again. Yes. Although... I have some thoughts. Right. Are they about what happened in Fallout 5, Fallout 6 and so on through to Fallout 75? I, I have some other thoughts. All right, let's hear them. If war must come, we stand together knowing that here in Vault 76, our future begins. All right then, what are these thoughts? Tell them to me and I'll hear them with my ear um, this year. Now, let's hear them. So, let me just preface this by okay. saying I think the idea of multiplayer Fallout is a good thing. Okay, why though? Well, if it's because... a series is about the solitary nature. Of... No, no, but it's not really, is it though? I mean, they pretend it's like a barren wasteland with no one in it, but actually it's full of people yes. all the time, all with their own cool things going on, like power armor and occasionally that giant rocket blimp thing. That's pretty cool. They're pretty busy. The, the Pridwin, are yes. you talking about? <laughs> I mean, yes, exactly, okay. the Pridwin. So sure. they've got their stuff going on. It, it's never lonely, is it, really? So fundamentally, I'm on board with the, the idea of a multiplayer. Yes, form. no, I agree. And I think that if you have a game where you can role play all of those things, like yes. you go, oh, I want to go off and become a roving trader and I'll yes. sell stim packs to people at inflated prices and mm -hmm. build a massive house, for example. Or I'm going to start a cult of people who worship this shoe yes. that I found. And we'll make a weird Fallout cult and it'll be strange, like Ooh. all the Fallout cults. I'll become an ant-themed superhero. Yeah. Right? So at last, you've penetrated the court of the antagonizer. Queen of all ants! No, that's the good one. But that's you can't do any of those things, as far as I can tell, in Fallout yeah, 76. Yeah, it sort of does turn out that that is the case, doesn't it? Yes. Um, which is a shame. Mmm. Yes. I feel like Chicken the most. Me. Sorry. <laughs> I feel like the most frustrating thing is that the problems with Fallout 76 are kind of ideological decisions, right? Rather than like technical limitations or, you know, just that it's impossible to make a Fallout game multiplayer. Yeah. I think they've, they've made a couple of decisions, a couple of key decisions which I think have worked against them. Okay. Shall I tell well, you what they yes, are? Yes, tell me what they are. What are these decisions? So first of all, Fallout 76 is a survival game. Sure. Right? Yes. But Bethesda, I don't think, had the kind of courage of their convictions in terms of the survival stuff. So a lot of the survival stuff is kind of minimised. Like it's not difficult to survive in Fallout 76. I mean, I am always starving. Yes but you very rarely die. And crucially, if you do die, the consequences are very, very minimal. Yes. Right? Yeah. You'd leave a small bag of junk mm -hmm. on the ground, but you spawn pretty much wherever you like. Uh, there's fast travel kind of available to you at all times, right? So there's none yeah, of this. Yeah, I mean, they charge oh, you I'm caps get, yeah. for stuff, but it's kind of hard to come by caps, but also you can put your camp wherever you want and you can Right, and fast travel, travel to, your, yeah, so. to your camp, right. So getting back to your camp is, is never the kind of long sort of odyssey it could be, right? Mm -hmm. So although it's a survival game, I think they looked at stuff like Survival Arc Survival Evolved and Conan Exiles and things like that and thought, that's really annoying and difficult. Yeah. We need to make this game less annoying and difficult. Okay. But I think fundamentally it sort of means the survival stuff isn't, the, the stakes are pretty low in yeah. terms of survival. The second ideological decision they made, sure, which I think works against them, is that they didn't want any humans in this world other than other player humans. Yeah, right. But they were they wanted to put robots everywhere. Yes. So, which is uh, weird. Just have humans. If you're going to have robots, just have humans. Exactly. Exactly that. Robots are like less interesting versions of humans. So we get someone to record the robot voice. Exactly. Right. <laughs> so like... it might as well be a human. In 
imagine dying of hunger or thirst? Yeah. And I kind of get the idea that it's supposed to be like in the recent aftermath of the nuclear explosion and like so it's been kind of wiped clean and the only survivors are these robots but people did survive because obviously they're all around and it's not the like the entire population of Fallout 3 and 4 are not the result of just like procreation do you know what I mean they're not all related to each other it's people survive these things right even yeah. if they weren't in the vaults okay sidebar robots can get diseases in it you can get disease versions of robots that's just weird isn't yeah. it what is it the disease smeared all over the chassis or what are we like talking a, here yeah, i don't know hello oh finally i feared you'd never wake up i think it was a big mistake i think it makes the world less interesting uh i think i can see sort of why they did it mm -hmm. they wanted all the other people to be sort of all your human in to human interactions to be multiplayer but i just think it makes the world seem really empty and boring and like bless them they've tried to include sort of story but you know there's only so much you can garner from uh you know bits of text and like audio tapes and if you follow those quest lines there are actually like quest lines mm -hmm. that involve human characters but you know because of the way the game is built that you're never going to meet those human characters at the end of it. You're yeah. just going to end up like, you know, plodding along and then eventually you'll and probably find a skeleton. You find the final tape and it's like, well, here I am at the ghoul in Oh no, yeah, exactly, I'm being yeah. eaten by ghouls. And then there's a skeleton and you're like, <laughs> oh no, I'm being eaten by ghouls. I better describe it into this audio tape as it happened. <laughs> there is a little bit of that Monty Python. And <laughs> yeah, exactly. The cave of Ah. Maybe, maybe he was yeah. dictating. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so those are the two big decisions, I think, that really work against Fallout 76. What, I mean, what do you reckon? Yeah, I mean, I, I really, I've said this in previous videos, I really like the um, environmental storytelling mm. in, in Fallout games. They're really good at telling stories with just a big pile of skeletons. Yeah, by the medium of skeletons. Yeah, which is, <laughs> you know, that's where their strengths lie. And yeah. those are some of my favourite bits of Fallout, are going through, like, vaults and reading all the computers and finding out what happened. But that's because you have a rich bounty of normal yeah. living humans to talk to on the side. Yeah, and I... I I wasn't sure until I like fully played the game how that would be mm. in Fallout 76. And there is still stuff there that I enjoy doing, like going to the um, uh, the what are they called the uh, mysterious caverns? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, going around and listening to the um, the tour guide about uh, the um, night kid who mm. lives down there, the Bat Boy who lived in the caves. And I was like, this is cool, but then there, there wasn't really a payoff to yeah. it. No. So you go around the caves and you're like, okay, cool. Now I'm going to fight Night Kid or something. But then just it sort of ends and you yeah, just leave the cave. Exactly. You're like, well, that was, you know, diverting, but it didn't really have a payoff like it would have done in a previous form. Exactly, game. yeah. It, that's the brilliant thing about Bethesda's, like, normal RPGs, is that you get all these side quests which are, like, have their own sort of plot arc with their satisfying ending at the end of it, and there's just none of that in Fallout 76. And I think it's really strange that the multiplayer Fallout game mm. is sort of the loneliest Fallout game there is yeah i mean it's i i think it depends it's like your mileage may vary with this stuff like if you go on the um fallout 76 subreddit it's full of like heartwarming tales of people running into strangers and like helping them build a settlement together you and... did share that reddit headline that was i just had a really great time that ended with me being murdered or something yeah like that. yeah so there's a bit of that but um i think like if you're really willing to put in the effort mm. like you can get some of that out of this game. Yeah. Um, but you do really have to search for it. Then. Yeah. It's not like the sort of thing you can casually load up and expect to have those sorts of experiences. Yeah, just I feel like it, it needs a confluence of sort of events and you need to be in the right place at the right time with the right selection of players. Yeah. And thing, you know, interesting things might happen and your own stories might might materialise, but I think for the most part that's just sort of too difficult to access and it needed a bit more help. But this is, I mean, this isn't the end for Fallout 76, no. right? Bethesda are going to be supporting this and updating it. Yeah, and adding I mean, stuff assuming to some it. people bought it, um, yeah, they will be. Uh, and I think, I think all of their efforts should be put into... Story. Into putting more story in there, yeah, and putting more conventional style Fallout quests. I think they were trying to make it clear that or almost like dodge criticism that it wasn't didn't feel like a fully fleshed out sort yeah. of fallout rpg by not doing it not even trying any of that stuff but actually i think that's the stuff they need to insert okay so let's say for example um they decide they want to add more story to it how about something like 
they go, oh, yeah, it turned out there were a couple of other vaults and they opened five years ago. Right. And everyone in that vault's been out in the well for five years. Um, and suddenly there's a load of human NPCs who yeah. are all acting, doing weird stuff or like having quests for you mm. or like have done like little mini story arcs that you can go through in the caves or up in that giant alligator water park or whatever. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the sort of thing you think that they, they could add? Yeah, I don't think there's any... I, I think unless they're going to be massive slaves to their own sort of narrative, I think a, a big sort of like almost reboot of the world hmm. is, you know, it's a persistent online game. Like, why not just throw all that stuff into the air? And places like, you know, we went to visit that ski resort at the top of the mountain and it's got like the kind of mall and stuff. That would be like a brilliant fallout yeah. settlement. But there's just no one in there apart from a yeah. couple of robots. Oh, there's that person up in the top who's like, hey, kill a bunch of stuff for me. Yeah. And you're like, well, I mean, why? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> why though? And that's the thing. I don't, you know, I don't want to rag on it too much. There are things I like about Fallout 76, and one of them is the world. Mm -hmm. But it, it, with that in mind, I can't help but feel I'd really like to play a proper Fallout game in this world. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. it's beautiful. It's really nice to look at. and It's an interesting new wasteland, which feels very, very different from the capital wasteland and the uh, Commonwealth and uh, the one ever the New Vegas one was called Mojave. Mojave Wasteland, yeah. Um, so yeah, I like I like the world. I like wandering around. I like exploring. But after a while, the the hollow tapes and the text things and the skeletons are, are just not enough for me. I've never been driven by loot. I don't really like the kind of MMO, any kind of MMO style mechanics, which they were kind of trying to row back from people, um, sort of comparing it to. You do sort of need to set your own goals mm. in it, which is something that some people can do and other people aren't. I mean, I'm not so good at that in a game. I sort of need the game to tell me, right, this is, yeah. your, this is your end game situation. This is what you work towards. So yeah, maybe something like that, that they can add and write, right, this is what we consider to be completing the game. Yeah. And yeah. Something that you're working towards. Whereas in this, it's just like, do whatever you want. Sometimes nuke each other. Mm. And yeah. It's just not enough me yeah. personally. Well, um, so it's not been a super successful launch, but you know, Bethesda are a, you know, big oh, game yeah. company who really like care about their big franchises mm. like Fallout and Skyrim and they don't want to basically torpedo one of their big franchises. So you've got to feel like they're going to be pulling out all the stops. Yeah, I sort of... Yeah, I feel like they will, I, I think they'll see the reviews, they'll see the, the sort of criticisms and they'll probably, there'll be at least a, a, a fairly substantial effort to try and rescue it before they sort of cut it loose. I think you only got to look at Elder Scrolls Online, which I think had a kind of shaky launch, yeah. but they kept at it and it's now like a super popular MMO. Um, and they've fleshed it out with so many different areas and things like that. I guess the the challenge will be whether they can get people to pay for that content or whether they're going to have to just throw a load of free stuff at it to, to kind of get it off the ground properly. Yeah. Um, other stuff I like, I like the bounty system. I think it's a really clever way to do sort of little PvP stuff, which mm -hmm. is like you have to sort of opt in to, to combat with other people, but once you do, um, you, you can be in combat with them. And then also if you misbehave, you become wanted, yeah. all the other players on your map disappear, and then the, the chase is on. Well, there's that, that radio station as well that you can mm. tune into if you want yes. to do straight PvP, which I've not tried. Um, I read a review that said it takes quite a while to get into. But, yeah, because um, not a lot of people are sort of yeah. participating. Basically. Well, it's nice. I mean, it's nice to have that option, though. Yeah. And that was, that was my initial main worry Concern, about the game, yeah. was like constant griefing from other players. And every time I've played, um, it's, it's not, but every time I've come across another person, they've been like, hey, how's it going, yeah. rather than, hey, I'm going to blow your head off. So. That's true, which is preferable, Yeah. but equally it's almost like, I find when I play it now, people almost can't be bothered to interact with each other. They're just it's, sort of yeah. beetling around doing their own little, you know, gathering their own loot and stuff. No one can really, like, it turns out without the hostile interaction, there's very little interaction at all, you yeah. know, the odd wave maybe. Yeah, but, um, but it's like a curt nod and then you're off about <laughs> your, exactly. your business. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I do like the, the base building stuff, and I feel like actually, although the base building is very similar to Fallout 4, I prefer it in Fallout 76 because 
I never really saw the point of building a base in Fallout 4 because no one else was ever going to see it. Yeah. You know, you spend all your time constructing this thing that only exists within your save file on your console. Yeah. It's actually nicer to be able to build some, something that someone else might be able to see. I think it, maybe it needs like a sort of main hub like Destiny's Tower mm. or something where you can go and you'll know that there'll be other people and you can talk to and yeah. like decide to do stuff rather than just wandering around and hoping. Mm. Because you can see people on the map, but you know you don't know what they're up to. They might be in the middle of some their own little weird, their own head yeah. cannon endgame thing, and they don't want to be disturbed. Mm. I saw someone on um, Reddit was uh, using a load of voice samples of Preston Garvey to go around and be Preston Garvey. Yeah, I saw that too. Yeah. Yeah. I was Absolutely. like, why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> Thought we got rid single of, most annoying bit. Got away from that guy. Yeah. Um, what I do hope is that if even if this is does turn out to be a massive failure and there's it could go either way, really, depending on mm -hmm. Bethesda's commitment to it and, and whether players are feeling forgiving and, and stuff like that. <laughs> but <laughs> yes, traditionally forgiving yes. people, uh, video, video game, game fans. Um, but at least what I hope is that there are learnings here from uh, this game that would be fed into adding sort of co-op to Bethesda's actual big RPGs. Because I'm still convinced it would be possible. It would take a lot of sort of changes to the way they build the games, I mm. suspect. But I think a, a co-op Skyrim is still possible. Yeah. I think a co-op Fallout would still be possible. Um, so I'm hoping that maybe they've, they've learned a bunch of lessons from this and that it might bring us closer to the actual dream, which is a proper story RPG thing where you can play it co-op with your friends and, and go through those quests. It's really funny because the storytelling in Fallout 76 is literally the worst kind of storytelling for any kind of multiplayer game because all you're doing is like... It's like reading. Yeah, it, you're yeah. loads of reading and listening to stuff on your own rather than if there's a character there talking to you and your co-op buddy. Plus it never pauses so you yeah. can be reading and being like got by a rad scorpion or something exactly. while you're trying to read some story. Exactly. Then so, you're, oh wait, I'm poisoned now. Great. So hopefully maybe they'll learn from it and, and, and try and apply those learnings to their, to their full RPGs which would be a pretty mm. exciting concept. I think. This is the Overseer signing off. Also, the thing you've got to remember about Fallout 76 is that uh, we had to wait five years between Fallout New Vegas and Fallout 4, mm -hmm. whereas we've only had to wait three years between Fallout 4 and Fallout 76. So and only one year until the next one. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. But That's how patterns work. My point is, is this Fallout better than no Fallout at all? Yes. Yes. Fallout is good. But is it is this Fallout better than oh. having fifty pounds in your pocket? Oh, okay. Pro pro possibly not. Yeah. Mm. Goodbye. Aloha. Ciao. And then I thought to myself, country roads do take you home. Uh huh. To yeah. the place where you belong. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. How does that factor into my challenge of the week, Andy? You want me to run down 100 country roads, is it? What? And then punch a super mutant in the junk or whatever? I don't think In that... my underwear, I expect. Jane, you've got it all wrong. Oh, yeah? You tell me you don't have a Fallout challenge for me. Oh, I didn't say that. <laughs> so, wait, what's going on? Well, Jane, yeah. we've played a lot of Fallout 76 recently. <laughs> yeah, which so, is not this. Yeah, so instead, yes. what I want you to do in this Fallout challenge... In in GTA 5. Yes, is right. to fall out uh, of this helicopter... Uh, it all makes sense. ...into a swimming pool. What? And not die. Okay. That's your challenge. Sounds uh, familiar. Have we done this one we've done it, Yes, we Christmas did it in the Christmas one challenges year. one year. All right, year. fine. Yeah, I really enjoyed this challenge last time we did it, so I thought right. it'd be a fun one for this Fallout episode. Okay. You have three goes. Yeah. To... What is your Michael wearing, by the way? I, he <laughs> dressed himself in that, uh -huh. all right? I didn't. Right. Sure, Andy. Usually he's in a very sharp seat. <laughs> he keeps, yeah, changing out of the sharp suits when you're not looking. <laughs> you see, Arthur Morgan would never do that. No. Nope. Now Forward. you can choose whatever Forward swimming pool you want. Jane, any uh, swimming pool you like. What about the ocean? That's the world's swimming pool. No, the ocean doesn't count oh, as a swimming pool, Jane. That's nature's swimming pool. <laughs> well, yes, that is true. That's as maybe. <laughs> as if the FBI has a giant skyscraper in town. <laughs> yeah, that's where they. Uh, that's where sure, the X Files are kept. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. Okay, floors full of X Files. So you're gonna head to the, the hills, I mean, the Finewood Hills. Pools. Yeah, oh, unless there's the an Olympic-sized swimming pool, I don't know about downtown. Let's maybe. go to the hills. And then fall out of this 76 helicopter. times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have 76 tries. I mean, that's what I assume. Oscar Mike, bravo. And then use the <laughs> Inbound to your position. <laughs> have you been drinking, James? <laughs> no. I wish. I'm just like, I wish I'd been the middle of the me. afternoon. Oh, no, down, no, hold down the right, <laughs> pull back on the stick. There's a swimming pool. Pull back oh, on the, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh. You're. You're. <laughs> 
pitch. You, you're. Oh, you are going into a building <laughs> any second. Uh, why? Why so hard? James, stop flying sideways. I never learned the control. <laughs> I'm going to go into the Chateau Marmont. Okay. It's got a big swimming pool. Okay, That's you're going to use Chateau the Chateau Marmont, Marmont, right? Marmont. Yeah. Is that what it's called in this game? Probably. No, it's uh, probably called the, the Chateau, Chateau Marmont. Chateau, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Chateau boobs Mont. <laughs> Satire. Right. Satire, guys. Let's go. All right. Okay, okay. fine. This is good. Uh, my tip would no, be not to line up going backwards? In, 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 uh, right on top of it because right. okay. uh, you'll you'll jump out okay. and have a bit of um, okay. momentum right. as you jump out. I don't want momentum. Uh. Oh, boy. All right. <laughs> All right. Why can't I just hold okay, steady? Uh, Tell me that. You can. Just All right, stop. dive out. Michael. Michael, no, jump. This is jump. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, no. That was like a six foot drop. <laughs> well, a oh. helicopter did explode right next to you. Well, yeah, no, that's true. It did do that. Like, oh. I was going to say that wouldn't count because you were like Why? six feet away from the <laughs> pool. You need to get a bit higher than that. <laughs> no. <laughs> I refuse. Right. And oh. you still missed. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. All right, Jane, attempt number two. Two of 76 attempts. Two of three attempts. You'll notice how show of the week this week is four hours long, and well, this is why. Here we go. All right, I'm taking off. Attempt Take number two. Off. We're back See? at the... I'm pressing nothing except the right trigger, and I'm drifting. So yeah, so you need to... This helicopter is defective, Andy. <laughs> it's right. defective. All right, let's go to, I assume, Cher's villa over here. Cher. Cher. Yeah. Amazing. All right, bit higher. Actually, that's too easy. Like, how do I break? <laughs> <laughs> you pull back on the stick. You can yeah. and then a slow down. Arrest your forward momentum. Arrest my forward momentum. We'll let you know when you're high enough. Oh, I see. I see. You could in first person. You could can check oh, the instruments. Oh, how do I? Uh, oh, hold. Yeah. Is it hold? Oh, that's not no, it. That's the back button. Yeah. That was the back button. And again. And again. There you go. Oh, altimeter. There yeah, we go. Check all your instruments. All right. Check my instruments. How high do you want me to go? Uh. Five high, six high. Yeah, let's go up to eight high. Let's go to eight hundred feet, I assume. All right, let's That's have a good. look. That's, That's good. Fair. That seems a good amount yeah. of high. All right, there's a pool under me. Well, go for it. Why not? All right. Okay, on, attempt Michael. two. It's happening. All right. Let's oh. See. Oh, no. oh, quick! Adjust your, <laughs> adjust your yaw. <laughs> oh, oh, your yaw. <laughs> Damn. Oh. Oh wow! Wow! Yeah. You might land in a pool at the bottom. Yeah. All right. Oh, let's keep rolling. Keep going, Michael. I believe you are. Oh. Fade out. Fine. Okay. One more go, Jane. Okay. All right, Jane. Yep. Attempt three. Yep. This is your final attempt. All right. I would go for challenge. the Chateau Marmont well, one because it's bigger, isn't luckily it? Luckily enough, here we are, right over the Chateau. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Right. Perfect All positioning. Right. And we are. Oh, Angel's nine. Rotate a little bit with I the am. bumper. I am. I am rotating with And then, with and then the you'll be pointing the right way. I yeah. think you stand a decent chance. All right. Oh, no. Okay, All wait. Right. So you want to point the door at the pool? Point the door at the pool. So rotate oh, sure. back to the right. Yeah. Point yeah. the door at the pool like it's nothing. I'm drifting. Why am I drifting? Is it the air? Is it wind? I don't know. Is it, is it this defective helicopter you've put me in? I haven't put you in a defective It's perfectly, <laughs> it's a fresh helicopter. This you've gone a, through two. It's a bad They're defective not disposed helicopter. These are tens yep. of thousands Single of. Single-use helicopters. Okay, well. <laughs> All right. I feel like you may have dropped slightly I below have. eight. <laughs> dropped about 500 <laughs> feet. I'm level with Bruce Willis's room at the Chateau <laughs> <laughs> Marmont. All right, what do you reckon? Making awkward eye contact. <laughs> Okay, that's positioning is good if you can All maintain right. that positioning and rise up a bit. Ah. Yeah, you need All to go right, higher. I'm rising. I'm rising. Oh, but I've now I've overshot the swimming pool. Okay. Yeah, well that's I'm the challenge. What? I know. You never said there'd be a challenge. <laughs> you never <laughs> said this challenge would be hard. <laughs> ah, there's some strong air currents around the math model <laughs> today, guys. This explains so many of our GTA failed online. GTA <laughs> online nights. <laughs> well, that's why I'm, not, I'm never the one piloting. <laughs> I just can't get my head around helicopter controls. Room for some chop, I told you. <laughs> <Room for some chop. laughs> Alright. Okay. I'm, Why aren't I'm you far going any higher? I'm oh, because Alright, fine. <laughs> no reason. Because no reason. Oh, this is gently, good. Gently. Gently. Good positioning. I'm learning. Yep. It's All good. Right. Bit more forward. There you go. Oh, right. No, drifting. Go, 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 go. No. Go. Michael! Yes, you come on. Jump Stay in the pool. No. Oh, no. No. Oh, no. oh no! Oh no! Oh my god! Oh jeez! <laughs> Wow, that was wow. Oh, his head detonated. That was <laughs> wow. That's going to take more than a hospital visit. Oh, oh dear. And then wow. he was canonically well, dead. Jeez. Getting closer, guys. So <laughs> another attempt. seventy-three yeah. attempts, yeah, and you'll be fine. Seventy-two to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hooray. Hooray! Oh, he's got a little cut on his forehead. <sighs> That's fine. Fine. Hooray. No points for Jane. <laughs> oh, bad luck, Jane. Sorry, Michael. He's got two black eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm surprised he's got any eyes. <laughs> it's a very good hospital. <laughs> a very. His good insurance policy is oh, excellent. Yeah. All right, back to fine. the studio.
Now it's time to see what's written in the YouTube comments and in Arthur Morgan's journal in Red Dead Redemption 2, giving us a window into his sensitive cowboy soul. It's a drawing of some nice horses and a squirrel. Yes. Yes, it is. Great, and here are the chosen comments on last week's episode of Show of the Week, in which we revisited Red Dead Redemption 2 and challenged Mike to hunt a legendary animal that we initially thought was a gopher, but which actually turned out to be a grizzly bear. Oh, oh, boy. oh, oh boy. Mike, Mike, Mike shoot him! Shoot him, Mike! No. Don't shoot him! Oh, 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 B, B no. to break free! B to oh, break no, free! No. I'm trying! Oh, Press wow. B. Oh, oh no! Oh, I can't move! Oh, oh, it's not going to work against a legendary bear, oh, is it? Oh, come, play dead! Easy, play dead, free, Arthur! Free, free. Play dead! Some commenters saw a silver lining in that horrific bear attack, such as commenter David Smith, who says, Mike failed the challenge, but if the challenge was to recreate their bear scene from The Revenant, then The Point and the Oscar are both undeniably his. I mean, that very clearly wasn't the challenge, but we'll let him know. He'll be delighted. Commenter Yorkshire Puddin, on the other hand, points out that Andy was more worried about Arthur's shirt being dirty than his face being ripped off by a bear. Priorities. Uh, yeah, I can get a new face by just respawning, but that's a high-collar dress shirt from the tailor in Saint-Denis. Those don't just grow on trees, you know. And speaking of your ridiculous vintage hipster Arthur Morgan, commenter Ian Carter writes to say I love that Luke and Andy have basically gone for the two types of hipster aesthetic for their Arthurs. Luke, the Macklemore-looking music aficionado, Andy, the vintage barista who only wears brands you've not heard of. Hey, so what you like about my Arthur, but he makes a mean cup of coffee. Moving on, here are your comments on this video in which Jane and I played Hitman 2's New Zealand set introductory mission and somehow managed to gas ourselves while hiding in a closet. She's wearing considerably more than he is to bed. Oh yeah. wait, no, he's having a shower. Oh! What? Oh no, oh, you're no. being poisoned! Oh no, I'm being poisoned! No, no, no I'm in here now, no! Oh. oh no! Oh no! I should have thought of that. Why didn't I think of that? Commenter Chance is justifiably impressed and says, Self-poisoning is a very Mike way to die in a video without any Mike. I don't know, I feel like we'd have needed to include an explosion or two for that to be truly Mike. Commenter Christopher Needham, on the other hand, appreciates my effort as the new Diana and says, TBH, Jane is the perfect Diana. Andy would keep telling you what you should have done, and Mike would just point out everything that can be used for an explosive. Jane would just roll with whatever 47 did. I don't know, pretty hard to roll with it when your hitman is unconscious in a closet. I would roll him out of the house and into the escape boat. Job done. Fair enough. Commenter Drake Orum, meanwhile, notes the following conversation. Andy, do you get to keep all their stuff if you kill them? Jane, yeah, 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 it's like Monopoly. Me, makes note to never play Monopoly with Jane. Spectacular. It's nice anyway. place. Do you think they'll let me keep this house if I kill her? I think that's the rules. That's yeah. the hitman rules. The hitman rules, yep. you get to keep all of their property. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Yeah. Uh, oh. It's like Monopoly. If you beat someone, <laughs> you can get all of their property. Is that not how you play Monopoly? No, you buy and sell properties. You don't just seize them in a violent land grab. <laughs> Man, your Monopoly games must take ages. Lastly in the comments this week, take a look at what's been said underneath this video in which we mix up the Skyrim cocktail, the Velvet La Chance, a specialty drink that includes honey, spiced wine, and nightshade, an ingredient we simulated with another less deadly member of the nightshade family. Mike, we're not going to be asking you to drink any deadly nightshade this week because not I did some week. research. <laughs> I looked into it, okay. and it turns out that the potato is also a member of the nightshade family. So uh, we're going to be adding just a little bit of potato just to uh, give it that nightshady edge. That, uh, that so. famous cocktail ingredient. Potato. It'll be nice. Why are you ruining it? Sorry. Always? It's good. Commenter Zoe Benson Potter admires our can do spirit and says I love how they saw that potatoes and nightshade are related, and instead of adding a bit of vodka, they just went with an actual potato. Commenter Andy McPee thinks it's less of a good idea, however, and says Very good work, but I don't think I'll be waiting 17 minutes at the bar for a drink while a distraught bartender searches around in back for a potato. Oh, you're missing out, Andy. Really, there's nothing like the distinctive tang of a raw potato to really elevate a drink to the next level. Says you, others were less impressed, such as Luke, as noted by commenter Hebrew Hammer 86 who says, As someone who works professionally as a cook, when Luke said, I would say it's not warm enough as if to be deliberate, is possibly the most polite but simultaneously most savage food critique I have ever heard. Gordon Ramsay and Chef Ellen should take notes. How come yeah, this one's so warm? Because it, we warmed it. Warm. Oh. Well, they're not, they're yeah. both warm. One of them has become less warm. I would say it's not warm enough that it feels deliberate. Honestly, everyone's a critic. It was nice. Really? Then why don't you drink some right now? Sure. I don't mind the taste. Yeah? How's that? Delicious. Now, mm -hmm. 
I have to go and finish this delicious drink in peace. Okay. Oh. Enjoy. Oh god. That's it for Show of the Week, thanks for watching, but before you go, be sure to hit the like button to indicate that you liked the video. There is, as yet, no ambivalent button, so that's probably your best bet. Yeah, uh -huh. thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. Oh no way, a new Battlefield did come out. Oh really? When? Uh, the 20th of November. Right. Or the 15th, if you bought the deluxe version of the game. Or the 9th, if you have an EA Origin Access Premier subscription. I'm beginning to see the problem.